Hello and welcome to News Analytica. I am Afumia Yelio and this is your news brief for the day. Will South Sudan descend into another civil war? None other than Ethiopia has hugely invested in the peaceful resolution of the conflict in South Sudan. For the warring parties in South Sudan, Ethiopia was a trusted mediator to facilitate a peace deal. Nonetheless, decades have passed without concrete steps towards peace in South Sudan. People still live in fear of renewed violence. Two years into their independence from Sudan, civil war started in 2013, when President Salva Kiir accused the then Vice President Rik Machar of plotting to overthrow him. This led to a non-stop conflict between factions led by Kiir and Machar. More than 400,000 people are reportedly killed during the civil war and 2.3 million refugees live in neighboring countries, including Uganda, while another 1.87 million people became internally displaced. The reason for war are complex and many, and oftentimes most people find it difficult to comprehend why a peace agreement is so hard to come by in the aftermath of so much suffering. The 2018 power sharing agreement, reached with the help of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed of Ethiopia, raised hopes for peace in South Sudan, but did little to reverse the effect that years of political and tribal conflict in the country has caused. This agreement was in part reached when the US threatened to sanction the South Sudanese leaders. That is why both sides view the agreement differently. Kier believes he had a military upper hand over Machar, and he spites the agreement as he believes it was imposed by the West and regional leaders. Machar and his supporters believed the pact would give those external players a basis for persuading Kier to share power. Have we seen this movie before? The head of the UN mission in South Sudan told the Security Council that since 2018, the revitalized agreement between the key players in South Sudan's long-running civil war has provided a framework for peace. Nonetheless, violence on local levels marked by cycles of cattle raiding, abduction, and revenge killings, in addition to active fighting and Upper Nile State, have displaced thousands of people. But the fear among many is that the violence could escalate nationally and threaten the very peace process many depend on. Activists in South Sudan are voicing their concerns that the failure of the peace process in South Sudan and the subsequent extension of transition deadlines will lead to further suffering of civilians and the inevitable outbreak of civil war. To the credit of the president and his opponent, the revitalized transitional government of national unity had been formed. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed congratulated Kiir on the formation of the transitional government, hailing it as an important milestone for the people of South Sudan. Nonetheless, both sides are said to be mobilizing forces, training them and raiding themselves for a potential war. And one of the key hurdles on the path to peace is the creation of a unified armed force command, which seems to have hit multiple roadblocks. One of the contributing factors to this stalemate is the extended roadmap to transition by two years. While the international community appreciated the agreement on the roadmap, no assurance is given if and when the outstanding issues could be resolved. And this is like a deja vu for several observers of South Sudan's politics. What is the way out? There is no magic bullet to resolve the crisis in South Sudan. But no doubt that the world and the regional leaders need to intervene to avoid a resumption of bloodshed that could have a significant impact on the regional peace and security. The international community, hence, needs to have a wider regional perspective when it comes to resolving the crisis in South Sudan. Several observers stress that Kier and Machar need to break the stalemate between their respective factions by addressing, together, the integration of opposition fighters into the army. Furthermore, regional leaders should pressure Kier and Machar to agree on integrating and downsizing the army, which will be key to halting clashes over flashpoint issues. This could help as a way of maintaining the Malakal deal, which aims to resolve the long-standing boundary dispute between the Padang Dinka and the Shilak. Others also suggest that both sides need to display tangible results by keeping to the strict deadlines to implement the roadmap to instill confidence in the population. Furthermore, mobilization of new forces also needs to be well managed and transparent so that the military shoulder brushing does not lead to a renewed bloodshed between the people of South Sudan. 
This was the news analysis for today and thank you very much for staying with us.